Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to our Elastic Fabric Adapter session today. My name is Chetan Rao, and I'm a senior product manager in the HPC team at AWS. And I help identify and build HPC products and solutions that solve our customers' most pressing engineering and business needs. Joining me today is Dr. Neil Ashton, Principal CFT Specialist Solutions Architect. As a computational fluid dynamics subject matter expert and someone, someone who I learn from on a daily basis, Neil helps HPC customers across verticals such as automotive, aerospace, and biosciences to deploy, optimize, and scale their CFD work, workflows on AWS. And today, together, we'll go over how EFA enables highly scalable HPC and ML workflows on AWS. Moving on to the agenda, over the next 30 to 40 minutes, we are gonna focus on two things. One, starting from customer need, we'll give you an overview of Elastic Fabric Adapter, or EFA for short, and its application performance. And two, dive into a specific use case, high fidelity CFT, which is a growing need um, in the CFT community, and demonstrate that workflow using AWS products and solutions. We'll end with live Q&A. Note that this session is pre-recorded, but Neil and I will be present to answer any questions you may have during or after the session. Ask away in the chat window, and we'll do our best to answer them real time um, through the chat, or if not, during the live Q&A. So let's begin. Starting with customer need, HPC and ML customers have to constantly figure out trade-offs between business and technical needs on an org-wide, project-wide, or team-wide basis. The graphs on the right help connect both the business and technical needs listed on the left. The top graph compares scaling curves for a CFD simulation across two types of instances, C5 with TCP IP network and C5N instances with EFA. The bottom graph compares the cost to completion between the two. The black dashed line connecting these two graphs shows a crossover point for when EFA becomes a quote unquote clear winner purely in terms of cost to results. Put it differently, if cost to results was the only priority and the highest priority, you wouldn't choose EFA unless you used more than 1400 cores. So if you, if you scaled out your simulation with higher cores. But that's not necessarily the only metric to consider. And usually price performance trumps all metrics. We could go on and on debating about what metrics makes more sense, but usually there is no one size fits all. And more often than not, these business and technical metrics are subjective and time variant and project variant. But there is usually always a trade-off between competing priorities. And that's what we at AWS try to do, which is provide you the flexibility and choice in making those decisions as we'll highlight soon. Let's talk about why you'd like to scale your HPC and ML workloads on AWS. We like to look at this across three dimensions as shown on the right side of the slide. First, faster time to market. For an on-premises installation, you're often limited by fixed size clusters, a major majority of which is bought once with hardware refresh cycles ranging from two to five years. This static aspect of on-premises hardware clusters and long job queue times can negatively impact your rate of innovation and project completion timelines, effectively impacting your time to market. At AWS, you get instant access to the latest technologies that AWS has to offer, and this spans server hardware with the latest CPU and GPU offering across vendors, high-speed networking, and most importantly, an ever-improving ecosystem of end-to-end -end solutions that helps you speed up your time to market. Second, faster time to results. Our wide selection of server platforms provides you per job or per project flexibility on cluster size selection and, and configuration, allowing you to iterate fast and also fail fast. And the on-demand ability to scale up or down your cluster as needed and when needed allows you not only to get faster time to results, but to get there in a cost-optimized manner. Both of these combined help you as a business achieve better return on invested capital, or ROIC, as mentioned 
um, in the third point. That is, the infrastructure scaling and agility that AWS offers you allows you to fine tune your overall business model ROI metrics. Let's now look at key services that enable HPC and ML on AWS. You get to choose from a variety of compute instance types on Amazon EC2, such as C5N with Intel Skylake CPUs, P3DN with NVIDIA V100s, G4DNs with NVIDIA T4s, all of which can, can be configured to suit your needs. Moving on to networking, EFA, an AWS custom-built network interface for EC2, provides an OS bypass networking functionality on these 100 Gbps network bandwidth instances to help scale tightly coupled workloads. AWS Parallel Cluster is an AWS supported open source cluster management tool that makes it easy for you to deploy and manage HPC clusters in AWS using schedulers such as Slurm. It also integrates with NiceDCV, AWS's high performance remote visualization protocol that enables customers to visualize their simulation results. And finally, the core of any HPC cluster is its file system. And FSx for Luster provides that fast and reliable parallel file system that natively integrates with S3, so you can easily combine the durable low-cost object storage with fast and reliable Luster file system, similar to many top 500 supercomputers. Diving into EFA, it is an AWS custom-built network interface that provides all of the functionality of an elastic network adapter, or ENA, with the additional OS bypass functionality. And you can enable it on any supported EC2 instance at no additional cost. It underpins the performance and scaling of our high networking instance types listed on the left. A call out that I'd like to make here is we are super excited about P4D, the latest EFA supported instance type launching soon. This will include the latest NVIDIA Ampere A100 GPUs and we can't wait to showcase EFA performance results on it. Going back to EFA functionality, OS Bypass is an access model that allows HPC and ML applications to communicate directly with the network interface cards, or NICs, to provide low latency reliable transport functionality. With EFA, tightly coupled HPC and ML applications have access to lower and more consistent latency, as well as higher throughput than traditional TCP channels. This enhances the performance of instance to instance communication for scaling tightly coupled ML and HPC applications. EFA is optimized to work on the existing AWS network infrastructure without modification to your code, and it can scale depending on application requirements. Most applications will work as is once a supported version of MPI or Nickel is made available to that application. And finally, I'd like to say that all of this is a snapshot in time instance support list for EFA. We are just getting started here, and so look out for exciting new EFA instance support updates over the coming months. Let's go further and take a look at HPC software stack on Amazon EC2. The stack without EFA is shown on the left side, and the stack on the right includes EFA. Parallel tightly coupled computing applications are typically based on the message passing interface, or MPI for short, for HPC applications, and NVIDIA Collective Communications Library, or NICL, for ML applications. On an instance without EFA, MPI or NICL applications talk to the ENA driver through the TCP IP stack. This adds extra time. As you can imagine, data has to transfer through the stack across the network and then back up the stack to allow for instance-to-instance -instance communication. So that extra time is doubled between two instances. On the right-hand side, MPI and Nickel applications talk directly to the EFA device through the LibFabric API to reduce latency. The LibFabric API bypasses the operating system kernel and communicates directly with the EFA device to put packets on the network. This reduces overhead and enables the HPC or ML applications to run more efficiently. The EFA the EFA provider is upstream to LibFabric and currently supports OpenMPI, Intel MPI, and Nickel. Let's talk a little bit about the transport protocol that underpins EFA, better known as Scalable Reliable Datagram, or SRD. 
It is inspired by the approach taken by the InfiniBand community, but we've made some important optimizations that are born out of our years of experience supporting and learning from an ever-growing global networking backbone across all of our data centers. Here are the key highlights. We guarantee delivery and do not consume resources on EC2 instances. We use equal cost multipath routing mechanisms, or ECMP, to optimally use multiple network paths, thereby avoiding hotspots in the network. We recover quickly from link failure situations or other severe network congestion scenarios, resulting in huge tail latency and jitter improvements versus equal and TCP IP based networks. We send messages out of order, thereby avoiding head of line blocking. And on the right, we compare and contrast what a link failure situation looks like between TCP IP and EFA um, running on SRD. In the top graph, notice how network throughput or bandwidth drops to zero in TCP IP, whereas SRD has a momentary dip in throughput recovering quickly. In the bottom graph, for the same scenario, you see how TCP network latency essentially is infinite since there is no traffic until a retransmit happens after a set duration, in this case at around the 1200 millisecond mark. In the SRD case, there will be a momentary latency spike impacting certain packets more than others, hence the difference, if you can notice, between the max and average latency spikes, the blue and orange um, curves there. Um, but essentially without a no traffic situation coming up at all. To reiterate the benefits, let's look at a tabular representation um, of SRD features while also comparing it to TCP IP and InfiniBand. I'd like to call your attention to three features circled that we already talked about in the SRD context in the previous slide, which are ordering, multipath, and retransmit timeouts. Circle there. SRD provides out of order messaging with multipath routing along with microsecond resolution retransmit timeouts. Additionally, I'd like to call out something that we are super excited about. Our SRD paper, Supercomputing on Nitro in AWS Cloud, authored by Leah Shalev, Senior Principal Engineer, Annapurna Labs, has been accepted for publication in the IEEE Micro Journal, and the early access version is available now. I highly recommend all of you to check it out to get a deeper insight into the why, what, and how of SRD. Next, I'd like to provide a quick overview of EFA use cases. Here's a snapshot of popular EFA use cases and solvers that our customers use. In short, they span computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, numerical weather prediction, or weather forecasting, and distributed machine learning. I've listed most of the solvers that our customers use across these three verticals. The one call out that I'd like to make is that we have the expertise in guiding customers with NASA codes like Overflow and Fun3D that are being used extensively in our GovCloud regions with ITAR compliant requirements and such. Uh, and that's been a super interesting growth area that um, we are engaged in. Moving on, um, I'd like to uh, go over a few of the publicly referenceable EFA success stories and um, specifically call out a couple. If you're into sailing, the 36th America's Cup is uh, scheduled to start on March 6, 2021. INEOS to Team UK selected AWS as its official cloud computing provider um, in its mission to become the first British sailing team to win the America's Cup. The team um, has run a CFD simulations for its AC75 Challengers board using C5N and EFA, speeding up its simulation times for the project from months to days. By the way, these are just not yachts, but literally flying yachts. They rise above water on hydrofoils and reach up to 46 knots which is 53 miles per hour or 85 kilometers per hour. It's unbelievable. The other customer call out that I'd like to make is Formula One, which is a sport that I grew up watching as a Michael Schumacher fan, and I'm still rooting for him to make a full recovery. And so Formula One uses EFA for its 2021 car regulations. Um, and in terms of CFD workloads that involve thousands of design iterations, each using 
about 1,200 to 2,000 cores. And with uh, AWS solutions, uh, specifically C5N and CEFA, it's been able to improve its time to results for its high fidelity DDES simulations, which are uh, meshes that have 500 million cells or thereabouts from 60 hours to 12 hours. Facebook AI research is something that I'm super excited about, but I'll cover a little later in the presentation. In the next few slides, let's look at how codes on different solvers scale with EFA. In this example, using the motorbike benchmark case with 40, 42 million cell mesh on OpenFoam, a popular open source CFT solver, at 576 cores or 16 nodes of C5N 18XL, EFA enables a 14X speed up factor, whereas C5 18XL over TCP only offers a 10X speed up. Moving on to another popular CFT solver, which is Siemens Star CCM Plus. Star CCM Plus is a powerful computational fluid dynamics or CFT code um, and is one of the most popular commercially available solvers. In this example, the race car case is 104 million cells, which even today, as Neil will tell you more about later, is considered large for a CFT case. Larger cases scale well, and you will find that even at thousands of cores, there is still quite a bit of computational effort on each of these com compute nodes. We see that Star CCM Plus is achieving 76% scaling efficiency at 4,700 cores, which equates to about 22,000 cells per core. In general, Star CCM Plus scales well down to about 20K cells per core when using EFA, but again, it's very subjective and it is dependent on, on codes and projects. And, and Neil will go into some of these details at the very end. Let's look at another CFT solver, ANSYS Fluent. Here we look at external flow over a Formula One race car benchmark with 140 million cells. At 3000 cores or 83 nodes of C5N using EFA, we see 89% scaling efficiency versus only 48% scaling efficiency using C5 with TCP. Switching verticals completely, let's talk a little bit about what the distributed ML training landscape looks like. Why do we need to scale up distributed ML? To put it simply, natural language processing or NLP is a hard problem to solve and the complexity which is the number of parameters as seen in that table. And the data size, as shown as well, is exponentially growing. And you can see on the last column on the table to so what that uh, effectively means in terms of time to train and the number of GPUs that are needed. You'll hear BERT a lot in this realm, and it stands for Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. Yep, that's a mouthful. And so let's dive into what BERT scaling looks like. Here we see um, a graph of scaling results or time to, time to train um, results for BERT large using EFA. Using clusters of P3DN instances, each instance having eight V100 32 gigabytes graphics memory NVIDIA GPUs, and 100 GBPS networking with EFA and 300 gigabytes per second NVLink, we can see that customers can drastically reduce model training times as shown in the graph, growing from four nodes or 32 GPUs to 128 nodes or 1,024 GPUs of P3DN instances, we see a 14X speed up in training times. Here's a look at what Facebook AI Research Group or FAIR um, uses EFA for. FAIR is an industry leader in machine learning and it recently showcased their results using P3DN and EFA and it is summarized in this slide. Using 32 nodes or 256 V100 GPUs, they saw a 1.5X speed up or TCP on BERT, which is the natural language processing model and a 1.3X speed up over TCP on TDS sec to sec which is an automated speech recognition or ASR model. They also called out graph learning as an emerging workload, and we are excited to continue our collaboration with FAIR as they keep pushing 
the distributed ML scaling boundaries. Another exciting development in the distributed ML space is EFA support for Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS. Customers can now create an EKS cluster with P3DN backend node group along with EFA, providing a workflow template for distributed deep learning training on EKS using EFA. The AWS sample on GitHub provides a getting started guide and we'll keep updating it. On this graph, you see how uh, with 16 nodes of P3DN 24XL, which is 128 V100 GPUs, we achieve about 96% scaling efficiency, which is super exciting to us. And finally, I'd like to share some hot off the oven EFA news with you. In addition to helping tightly coupled HPC and distributed ML applications scale, EFA now supports a brand new vertical, uncompressed live video processing on AWS. On September 15th, AWS Elemental launched Cloud Digital Interface, or CDI, which is a network technology available at no additional cost that is underpinned by EFA and SRD. And this allows you to transport high quality 4K 60 frames per second uncompressed video inside the AWS cloud with high reliability and network latency as low as eight milliseconds. CDI combines the scalability and agility of AWS with the raw performance of on-premise standards like Serial Digital Interface, SDI, and we're super excited to help our live broadcast customers innovate further on AWS using EFA. With that, let's move on to getting a closer look at something that I'd mentioned before, which is a growing vertical in our user base, high fidelity CFD workflows. And I'll pass it on to Neil to take it from here. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, so we wanted to dive into a you know particular example uh, of a workload that really you know benefits from uh, from EFA, uh, and that's um, CFD. So uh, I suppose the logical question is why CFD, and in particular why high fidelity CFD. Well, I think it's fair to say that the goals of many industry verticals, you know, whether it's automotive or aerospace or, or really any sector is to try and move towards a fully digital design process you know something where you can really try to bring products faster to market because you don't need to rely on physical testing uh, and the, the the potential extra expense that takes i mean if we look at for example a, a car design scenario if you had to design a car you know the way it is now then yes things like CFD are used, uh, but you also have to go through the process of building prototypes to take to wind tunnels, uh, to test out onto tracks to do the tests. If you can imagine a world where you could do all of this through uh, numerical approaches like CFD, uh, you would be potentially able to iterate much quicker uh, through products. Uh, and so I think it's fair to say this is you know, a goal for most of the, the large companies. Um, so, as I said, CFD enables this to some extent, but accuracy is limited. Uh, you know, CFD is a computational fluid dynamics. You know, we're, we're trying to solve these Navier-Stokes equations, but we're doing it in such a way that we're adding approximations. Uh, and it's fair to say that without going into the details, there is a close correlation between the accuracy of CFD and the HPC cost. And really what that basically means is that the potential is that the HPC hardware can be the bottleneck. And this is something fundamentally AWS that we think should not be the case. You know, we see that on the left, you've got an example of a typical on-premise cluster that has finite capacity. Uh, and as an end user, as an end CFD user, you have to try and fit your job in there. Well, really, we believe that it should be more like the right, where you can scale your job to, to any size it needs to be. Uh, and this is particularly relevant for high fidelity CFD, where you need potentially large numbers of cores beyond a thousand cores, let's say, uh, that may need to run for hours um, at a time. Uh, on a typical on-premise cluster right now in many automotive aerospace uh, companies, uh, you, there simply would not be the space to do that. Um, you would have to essentially shrink your job down, run on fewer cores, and potentially run for days or even weeks. 
Uh, and once you get to those sort of timescales, the usefulness within a design process starts to fade away. Um, so, so high fidelity CFD is a scenario where uh, both AWS and um, particularly EFA starts to come in because of the, the large core count that you typically would need. Uh, and we saw some examples previously, but I just want to kind of reiterate some ones where we've seen that, you know, EFA, uh, and in this case on the Amazon EC2 C5N 18X large, um, really can enable you to scale out. Uh, the easiest way to interpret this graph for something like OpenFoam is simply that um, on 2,300 cores, uh, you're going to pay the same as you are on, let's say, 200 cores, uh, but you're going to get it back uh, a hell of a lot faster. Uh, and so this really has an, an implication on uh, you know, your turnaround time. And any designer of any company in the world will tell you that they want it back as soon as possible. Now, if you go to Star CCM, you've got another example here where you know, this was a particularly large case, 400 million cells. This was a high fidelity uh, DES case, as we call it, for people who uh, you know, understand their CFD acronyms. Um, and this was able to run out linearly to over 4,000 cores. Again, the central point being here that compared to, let's say, 300 cores, which I think is a fair representation of what many companies would have available to them as an individual user, um, you can you know, speed up you know, maybe 10 times your simulation, uh, which is really from maybe a week uh, to less than a day. You can't reiterate how much of a difference this can make on an end user uh, and something that we really want to support going forward. Uh, and finally, just is a very uh, condensed kind of example of, of codes. This is Fluent scaling out to uh, more than 7,000 cores uh, on a, uh, you know, the, the open benchmark, it's called the, the F1 car. Um, many other codes that Chatting was talking about, you know, um, from the kind of NASA uh, overflow codes uh, to many of the academic uh, codes that have been developed from universities throughout the world, uh, or, or even codes that have been used to, you know, model fires in uh, in, in buildings like FDS. Uh, you can think of pretty much any CFT code, and it's probably run on AWS, uh, and we've done some benchmark on it. So unfortunately, not enough time to show you all of them today, uh, but hopefully those three do give you some indication. Um, but I suppose one thing that you know both of us share a passion for is to is to really show the relevance to to end users, you know, and not just to show graphs, uh, but to actually show how this works in reality. Uh, and so what I wanted to just quickly show you was an example of a uh, of a high fidelity case. Um, this is a, a, a popular open source. Um, automotive model, it's called the driver model, it was produced to essentially allow people to study the aerodynamics and the flow physics, and in this case, some of the HPC performance, uh, over a, a realistic road car. Uh, in this, we're using SimCenter Star CCM, it's around 160 million uh, cells, um, and we're going to be, uh, the backbone of this was enabled thanks to AWS Parallel Cluster, uh, and of course, uh, EF, EFA as well. Um, so, I, so I'll share my screen and I'll show you, uh, show you how this works. So what we need to do if you actually want to run a case is create some sort of cluster. Um, and I won't go into too much detail here now because we have some dedicated sessions on uh, AWS Parallel Cluster. But what I wanted to just very briefly show you is that essentially on the right side, uh, I've just created a, a cluster of my own choosing just to, to run this case. Um, I, I've created a, a bunch of queues because um, with the latest version of Parallel Cluster, we can have different instance types or different queues. So I've got a mesh, uh, I've got a solve for on-demand with a certain instance type, the C5N, I've got a solve on-demand with C5, I've got a spot version, uh, and, uh, and later on I've got a, uh, a GPU uh, queue essentially. So, so all of these are on the right. Um, I can very easily then just go P cluster create, uh, and with, within around five to 10 minutes, uh, a cluster will be created for me. Uh, and that's essentially what I am uh, on the left side here. Uh, I've just logged onto this cluster, just SSH to it. And if I do S info and move along here, you can see I've got my queues. I've actually already got a job running. Um, and if I do SQ, you can see I've got a 100 node job here, which is one of the cases that I want to uh, submit. Now I've got FX for Lustre as my drive and a very simple one here. I've just got star CCM installed uh, and I've got some uh, a SIM file here, which is a uh, fastback for the driver. It's from actually a um, the first automotive CFD prediction workshop 
um, that, that I was helping to lead. Uh, and so it's one of the cases from, from that workshop. Uh, and simply all I want to be able to do is to submit that um, to the to the cluster. So an example of the submission um, script I'm using uh, is something pretty simple here. It's a Slurm one. So I've just got the number of cores I want to run, the partition. Um, here I'm just adding a few flags to tell it uh, which fabric I'm using, uh, and I'm using OpenMPI. But apart from that, it's probably similar to what most people would be running. Uh, and I can just submit that uh, to the queue. Now, in reality, I've actually already uh, got a job job running to that. Uh, and so actually what I want to do now is take advantage of DCV to be able to remotely connect to this cluster. And so here I'm on the, the head node. Um, and if I do LS, I can see the, the same files as I had before. And what I can actually do now is take advantage of the star CCM connect to server. So I can actually open up star CCM. And I can do connect to server. This is the IP of the, um, the, the job that's running. Uh, and in this case, uh, it's not actually run, it's in server mode. Um, so if I want to actually start it to run, uh, then I need to, to, to press uh, go essentially, which we'll do once it's connected. Okay, and so we connected to, to the job, uh, and so we can actually get it to start running. Okay, and so the job is, is actually running now, so we can see the residuals. So we can see that it's running at about 0.3 seconds per iteration. Um, now, uh, most people who run cases, so this is 160 million cells, uh, will be able to work out at the back of an envelope that this is actually a pretty big speed up. Um, and so if you need to run, you know, maybe 20,000 iterations at just 0.3 seconds uh, per iteration, you're going to get this back, um, you know, pretty quick. Um, so what this also enables you to do is really be able to run one of these big cases now. Um, you know, this is a, a fully transient case. Spin it up to, in this case, you know, 3,600 cores. Test that it works. Do some do some evaluation, maybe, uh, and then just stop it and um, and have a look at the results. So we can actually stop the model. Don't need to go and you know reserve a cluster and tell everybody to get off, uh, as you may have to do on prem if you ask for over 3,000 cores. What we can do now is um, just have a look at maybe you know a very basic scene of, of how the car looks. And you can see there, you know, this is just a very simple flow field. You could do some much better visualization if you wanted to. Um, but the point is you've been able to get open a, you know, quite a big model uh, quite, quite quickly. Um, so we could start to have a look at the mesh maybe, uh, and then we can maybe clear this scene away and carry on running again. And so the point being is that um, EFA is not only a, a way to get great scalability, but it's to actually enable a step change in the way that you can use CFD. You don't have to think, I don't have enough resources to go to the next stage and run these high fidelity models, whether it's star CCM or any other code. Uh, it enables you to the hardware not to be the bottleneck. Uh, and I think that's the, the key message that we're both really trying to put across uh, is that we're in the business of enabling greater innovation uh, and, uh, and not just making nice uh, graphs for benchmarking results. Um, so I, um, I hope that that's been interesting to hear both of us speak about EFA and the way it's enabling certain workloads. Uh, and perhaps now is a good time to, uh, to take any questions.